1733, 42 Jews came to Georgia from Europe seeking religious freedom. Our Revolutionary War in 1776 was about freedom, so it's not hard to understand why some of our leading patriots were Jewish. One endured capture, imprisonment, separation from his family, and he sacrificed his entire personal fortune for what he believed in. He was a hero. His name, Mordecai Shefto. Fire! On December 29, 1778, the British attacked Savannah. Trying to escape, the American soldiers fled across Musgrove Creek. Among them were Mordecai Sheftel and his teenage son, Sheftel Sheftel. They found that they, they were surrounded by British. And some, I suppose, tried to escape by swimming over the river, or uh, the creek. We gotta swim. I can't we swim. swim. Father, I cannot swim. But Sheftel Sheftel, who was 16 years old at the time, didn't know how to swim, and his father wouldn't leave him. So they were taken prisoner. Where are they? Where are they? Supply. The British threatened Mordecai by holding a bayonet at his throat, but he refused to tell them where the Americans were hiding their weapons and supplies. He said on several occasions they were afraid they were going to be skivered. Where are they? According to an actual account, the British skivered prisoners by, quote, plunging their bayonets until they tore out their victims' entrails. I'm not saying the thing. I'll skiver your throat. Go ahead, Hudson. I'll kill your child. I'm talking. No. Out of the way! No! How are you doing? Fortunately for Mordecai, he could speak a little German, and a Hessian or German officer took mercy on him. Are you okay? Come with me. For the next three years, Mordecai was imprisoned, paroled, recaptured, and separated from his children, and his wife, Fanny. But that was only part of his hardships. It was a war that financially was run on the shoestring. And one of the things that ruined a lot of people in the war was the fact that they had to put their money out. Uh, this war was not just fought with, with blood, it was also fought with treasure. And, uh, and Sheftel is, is a good example of that so sort of patriotic willingness to, to sacrifice all. War is expensive. The Civil War cost an estimated $20 billion. World War II, the most expensive war in history, cost $1.5 trillion. The Vietnam War, America's longest, cost some $150 billion. Back in 1776, the provisionary American government, the Continental Congress, decided to wage war without thinking about the cost. Before Mordecai's capture, the Continental Congress gave him the title of Colonel, which made him the highest ranking Jewish officer in the Revolutionary War. It also made him responsible for feeding and clothing all the troops in both Georgia and South Carolina. He was responsible because the Continental Congress was broke. So Shefto dipped into his reserves in many cases, which was British currency, and used that to buy goods for the, uh, for the Continental uh, Army. In some cases, he was able to do it on his signature. Uh, he wasn't the only one. George Washington, if, if you look in George Washington's uh, records, you'll see over and over again he's trying to get reimbursed for money he spent on the troops. And a lot of it he didn't get back. I suppose Mordecai was willing to dip into his own pocket and buy the goods that the soldiers needed for a couple of reasons. It was his job, he had, had accepted the commission, and he was doing his job, and, and this was the only way it could be done. And there was, he was honor bound to do it. He also had every reason to believe that the Congress and the military officials were gonna do the best they could to pay him back. What ultimately caused his financial ruin was the fact that he supplied these these um, materials and never was repaid for it. And so his his own business of course couldn't continue after Savannah fell to the British and his his mercantile business was was gone. Well he tried to go back to his old uh, occupations 
and he tried. He was very industrious, but he never attained the success that he had had before. Still, at the end of the war, despite all the hardships and all his losses, Mordecai never questioned the sacrifices he had made. He was proud of his son, who was also a veteran of the revolution, and he looked towards the future. He wrote a letter congratulating his son, and the one phrase that sticks in my mind is that we have the world to begin again, which I think is a very optimistic phrase. Well, there was a lot of optimism. There was optimism everywhere. We had just established a new country. We had won our independence against unbelievable odds. And even though the, the economic system, the business system, and their whole world, certainly politically and financially, had, had been wiped out in Savannah, uh, it was a new beginning. The Civil War began April 19, 1861. The first shot of the Revolutionary War was fired on the very same day, 86 years earlier. About Georgia's economic history, there are more stories to tell, so we'll be back. This is Georgia Stories 2. I'm Colin Sedor.